Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Conquer the Clutter for June the 28th. Woo, we're well and truly into summer. And there were days in the winter we thought it would never come. Um, but here we are. So uh, today's topic is about the finish, the last four um, distorted or problematic thinking styles that do get in our way. They happen every day just as a part of natural behavior. You need to catch yourself because they don't lead anywhere you want to go. All right, but today we're going to do something a little uh, different. At the very end, there's going to be a system um, that I discovered. Um, I can't take credit for it, um, but it is a step-by-step, -step, pretty simple, pretty raw truth, pretty okay, you really want to stop this, this is the easiest, most efficient and effective way to do it. All right, so we're going to go through that at the end. All right, so I want to remind you of a few things, however. First of all, please everyone stay um, muted because it becomes um, disruptive to the group when uh, independently, without being asked, people unmute themselves and then um, interrupt whatever the process was that we were in the middle of. So please stay muted. All right. Good. All right. Another thing I want to remind you of, and this is so basic, but it is so important for us to accept. Um, and when I first heard it, I don't even remember how long ago that was, um, I thought to myself, are you out of your mind? That can't be true. And then I started to look at it and I thought, you know, yeah, I, I have actually some ownership of and some responsibility if I don't want to own um, this way of thinking. Again, it doesn't lead anywhere you want to go or you want to be or stay. <clears throat> it is almost never the event itself that hurts us. Right? It is almost always the meaning that we apply to it. Remember the bubbles in the uh, one of the previous podcasts. I think it was two or three podcasts ago. The cognitive behavioral CBT bubble strategy. All right. And the reason that I want to keep referring you back to that is those four questions that are part of that CBT bubble system, those will get you out. Well, it will stop you dead in your tracks, all right? If you're on a thinking path that is leading you to a distorted, not solution-focused um, outcome. And it, depending on how much emotional loading you add to that, all right, you can stay stuck there uh, believing the lie. Um, it's a distortion in our thinking. And it comes from pain. It comes from feeling powerless. It comes from feeling overwhelmed. How many people here, put your hands up, please, like this, if you actually want to stay overwhelmed, feeling defeated, and feeling angry and powerless? I'm thinking not. All right. So the bubbles and those side four questions, as well as the fundamental three. What do I need right in this moment? Where is it? And how do I get enough of it to make enough of a difference? Those are your life rafts when you feel yourself swimming in soup. All right. Swimming in the soup. So the meaning we apply, um, rightly or wrongly, heavily influences. Guess what it heavily influences? The range and option of choices we are going to give ourselves permission and capacity, the ability to look at for ourselves. All right. And we are always looking for these. These don't happen on days when oh, this kind of process doesn't happen. Sorry, on days when we're feeling 
great about things. These sorts of questions happen when we're confused or we're facing troubling life situations. This means basic line that it's our thoughts. What we invest in as far as thoughts and give meaning that most often influence us. So we want to be very, very careful to catch the distortions. Now, the problematic thinking styles that we, we covered last week and the ones we're, the four we're going to cover today, these aren't troubling thoughts. These are the mechanisms that we opt for most easily, all right? These are the pathways to the distorted thoughts, all right? So you now have a way when you're feeling these ways, when you hear yourself starting to say certain things, the reason we're doing this, people, is so that upstream, you can start to be aware you know, th this, this isn't, there's something wrong with this. All right. This, this isn't the whole truth. Even if it's part of the truth, it isn't the whole truth. I want to be very, very cautious how much I invest in the feelings and these thought distortions. Treat them positively or negatively. All right. <clears throat> so let's look at the four remaining uh, problem thinking uh, styles. Um, because they will psych us out. These thought distortions, problematic thinking styles will psych us out, putting us on the wrong path. And it can be quite a way down that path before we bump our head and go, wait, I think I was here before and I didn't like it the last time. This is not getting me where I need to be. I'm off track. All right. So let's give ourselves a fair chance to work out these challenging situations that every single day in your life and in mine, all right, are sent to us. <clears throat> Sorry. And if we catch our, the sooner we catch ourselves in identifying these, the easier it's going to be to figure out. We're going to have less invested, less backstroking to do, okay? to figure out our better or best options. Okay, number eight, we did seven last week. Labeling or mental filtering. So this happens when we do things like, instead of saying, uh, uh, here we are again, I made a mistake. All right, your reaction is to beat yourself up with, demeaning labels, diminishing self-respect. Oh, such a failure. Yeah, I always, I always do this. Oh, I'm a loser. All right. I must. And then once we get into that kind of language about ourselves, we're not on team us. All right. We're on team other side. Let's beat the guy into a pulp. All right. And so you want to watch how long you stay there. As soon as that starts coming to your mind, it can feel real. It isn't. All right. It's like Disney. All right. Disney are great movies, but there's not one iota of that that represents the truth about life. All right. At least if you're going to face something down, face down something that is real. You're not a loser. You wouldn't try as hard as you folks are trying to deal with clutter, to deal with hoarding, to deal with other things that accompanying those behaviors. You wouldn't be here every week. You wouldn't try as hard as you're trying. And because as soon as you start labeling yourself, now, whatever the conclusion is, is you in your entirety. There is no room left over for, hmm. What's wrong with this situation? Is it my approach? Or is it that I have not made the right assessment and the plan is faulty? That's why it's not working. It's one of those two. You're putting in data in, results out. You're either on the wrong track, you're misunderstanding something, you're dealing from fear, not fact. 
All right, if you're going to check something out, check out who knows the most about this thing that I don't want in my life? Who knows the most about that? And where is the best advice today, right now? And deal with that, all right? Because those conclusions, when you get yourself in this self-defeating soup, all right, you're usually deciding something negative about yourself. So if you can decide something negative about yourself, you can do the same thing in reverse. It's a process. It's what side of the equation you opt for. We are all, there isn't anybody here today, myself included, who doesn't have problems. All right. That's part of the human condition. It doesn't make us losers and it doesn't make us fa failures in whatever area we're still working on or areas. People, you and I, are more than the problems we have. And we are also more than the qualities we have. Our qualities or our skills are just the other side of the equation. All right? And we can be better, better about both. We can get better. We are not simply defined by, oh, I'm this right side of the brain. I'm not, I'm not left side of the brain. No, you are. You're both. But remember, whatever you habituate, you do more of. And you get better at. Now, let's pose an interesting question. If you're going to get better at something, what side do you want to be better at? The losing side? or the successful side, because it's our choice. When we base our actions, our plan for ourselves on facts, even if those facts are, you know what, I need a little help with this because this particular stream of action is not my strong suit, all right? Where do I get the help I need or where do I get better information so that I can be my own coach? out of this situation it's all there for the taking what path do you want to take if you're going to get better at something what side of that equation do you want to get better at it's a choice okay the labels that we use to depict the problem those labels have nothing to do with the person except that you might be inadvertently contributing if you're dealing from fear or you're dealing from lowering your self-respect, lowering your self-esteem, talking yourself into a bigger problem, that's the only way. Whatever side you make the contribution on is the side you're going to have more influence to end up on. Okay? Our qualities, our skills and are certainly not the entirety of who we are as individuals. So if you've been doing that, stop. Stop and try what we're talking about today. The first step is identify the distortion. All right, identify the distortion. So one of the ways that we invest more in what our emotions are telling us. Usually it's from feelings of fear or defeat, or certainly being overwhelmed, is something called fortune telling, all right? Fortune telling is when we predict things will turn out badly or turn out a certain way based on our limited experience. No matter how many times you've done something and it hasn't worked out well, chances are in some small ways it has worked out better or more efficiently. All right. And remember that the context is everything. Context is everything. Today, you are not the same person 
You're trying with more experience, even if that experience is what hasn't worked. Well, then you know, don't repeat, do not repeat, do not repeat, do not repeat. All right. Try to start to habituate something that is more based on better information and evidence. What are the defining characteristics of the problem you're having? You're a different person than you were the last time you tried. And the situation you're in is a different. The context of today, we are not the same people today. We were yesterday. We have changed in other ways. We, we've either gotten better at something or we haven't gotten better at something, but we've become more informed that that clearly is not the right way. All right. In fact, fortune telling becomes the basis for the problem. The prediction is not the same. Predicting based on it happened that way. I've done that in the past. It didn't work out. When a suggestion is, well, why not try this? Yeah, one time, a long time ago, I tried that. It didn't work. It's never worked. I know somebody, he tried that. They tried that. No, that can't work. The way you can try to make that work is to break it down into tiny parts. Break it down into its parts and work through one step at a time, one part at a time, making adjustments as you go. Prediction is fantasy. All right. And it's not the same as observation. All right. And you want to be really, really sure that before you buy on for an idea or you disavow, disqualify an idea, you have a wealth of experience. And it is not drawn by observing somebody else. All right. Prediction. That won't work is not the same as observation. Everyone has a sunny side and every one of us has a shadow side. All right? It's how we manage and how we take responsibility. That's, that is the significant foundation piece for moving forward and dealing with our life. Everyone has a positive sunny side. Everyone has a shadow side. All right. Every single person on the face of this earth. It is how we manage, admit the truth, and manage it. Build a plan to lessen the negatives of the ways. Please don't ever ask me to find my way out of anything geographically. The best invention in this whole world was MapQuest. All right. That was like, or Google Maps. Okay. That's it. Oh, I have no sense of direction. Okay. No sense of direction whatsoever. And you know what? I stopped worrying about it. I invest in a, a wiser solution. Because I'm never going to be a star at that. All right. I have to watch my Irish stubborn side. All right. It goes back generations. It is probably why the Irish fought for 106 years, couldn't remember what they were fighting about, but they were still in for the fight. All right. Eh. What are your amusing but not I would go to that part of myself for a solution. Or if I found that part of myself rearing its ugly head, I, I would go on alert because it's not going to get me the outcome, a positive outcome every time. All right. So it is how we manage and take responsibility for each of our skills and each of our eh, not strongest parts to moving forward and dealing with our life. Okay, so hold on just a second, people. There we go. All right. Next problematic thinking style. 
blame. First guy out of the gate to get the finger pointed at somehow saves me. And who said, I can't even remember. When you point, when you blame it, somebody else, you point, remember how many fingers are facing back at you. If you're having a conflict, if you're having a conflict, you are inherently part of that problem. None of us like to look at that. There can't be a conflict if both parties don't play some part. It doesn't mean it's equal parts, but it isn't always the other guy. All right? Now, that can work two ways. You can blame the other guy or you can blame yourself for something. In fact, while we engage in self-blame, that is not the same, by the way, as taking responsibility. All right? That is not the same. So, while we engage in self-blame, you cannot possibly be entirely responsible for, I can't think of one situation that you can be 100% responsible for, okay? So, when you're tempted to blame, know that that's a protective measure. And while you're blaming the other guy, if you're feeling part of that struggle, there's a whole chunk that you're not looking at that belongs to you and me. What, and you can only fix your part. That's why it's so important to change the lens and stop just blaming the other guy. Set boundaries and limits for the other guy. Healthy boundaries and limits that protect against whatever the conflict is continuing or worsening or becoming habituated. We need that on top of everything else. And then at the same time, take personal responsibility. What part am I playing in this? Because that is the only part I can actually change. All right. And while we're blaming, we're usually overlooking the ways that the balance of who's responsible for what that contributed to this problem is overlooked. Remember, where there's a conflict involved, it takes two people to have a conflict. It does not mean that each party is equally, equally contributes to it, but you can only solve your piece. The part you can solve for the other guy is because there's a lot of conflict, right? The part that you can solve for the other guy is to set a healthy boundary and limit that stops whatever the game is that's contributing to this conflict. The next, the 10th problematic thinking style that is going to get us in trouble and psych us out, we'll be so far down that path if we buy into any of these that we waste a lot of time backstroking out of it, okay? Underestimating oneself. You, it's a really unwise choice to decide that you can't do something. Really unwise. You cheat yourself, okay? If before you even try, you decide I never was good at that. Well, that is not the way to get good at it. Or to handle this situation. All right. Okay, the people need to be admitted here. Sorry, I just need to admit somebody. All right, good. So, how to handle it. Before trying, stop and ask. What is an adequate fact-based assessment of whatever it is that you're afraid you're not going to succeed at or be able to handle? Before trying, always assess what the task is and how you could possibly break it down into doable steps. I'm going to share a story here with you, and it's a true story. When my mother um, 
was dying of cancer. Um, I think I told you, you folks before, I was angry. And, um, but I was her primary caretaker uh, because I was the child who lived locally. And I remember at one point saying to her, the nurse hadn't, hadn't arrived. She, we'd rung the buzzer and they were busy and whatever. But of course, in my emotional state, I was, oh, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to make this happen. I don't understand how you can be so calm. I don't understand you how you can be so accepting. I just don't get it. Like, you know, it's little enough. And, and you're the one with the problem. And she said, Elaine, it is what it is. I have cancer. And this is the stage I'm at. And I said, yeah, but there's help. And she said, if they could come, they would be here. She said, listen, there's no point in wasting energy, getting angry and upset. If this is, this is the reality and I just break it down into little chunks, little periods of time that I can manage. And if I can't manage that, then I break it down a little more. And I keep breaking it down until I can carry this. I can handle this because this is mine to carry. And I wanna offer you folks that same advice applied to very, very different life situations. If you can't carry it right now, break it down. Try to carry that to an effective outcome. If you can't do that, break it down again and keep breaking it down because you deserve success. You show up here every week looking for information and looking for help. All right helping you to, to enhance your motivation, enhance the plan. You deserve success at whatever challenges brings you here every week. Just keep breaking it down until you can carry it because you can do this. Keep breaking it down into doable steps. And if you find you're not getting moving forward. Maybe it's not you. Maybe it's the plan. And maybe your plan doesn't combine, given the challenges that are in front of you today and tomorrow, maybe your plan doesn't contain the right adequate tools, adequate resources that you need to get access to, all right? So that when you're working your plan, you're making decisions about what the next step is, you will be able to accomplish what you need to accomplish in doable, small, repeated chunks, all right? Okay, the next, problematic because there aren't enough of them um problematic thinking styles all right overestimating oneself preemptively where i see this happening all the time is when people are in a bit of a fix and there is um, enforcement agents have become involved either the fire department or they've been discovered or children's aid or bylaw, property standards, animal control, whatever it is, all right, has become involved, all right? And the person overestimates what they're able to accomplish within a time frame. Worst thing you can do, worst thing you can do, all right? It isn't any better when you defeat yourself your own self-esteem, your own motivation, your own sense of accomplishment, when you do it to yourself, preemptively overestimating, yeah, yeah, I'll have this done this afternoon. Yeah, no, I'll do, I'll do this, I'll do this table in 
15 minutes, 20 minutes. Yep. Nope. All right. When it's really important, and it, it is really always important, it's never a good idea to undercut your own self esteem or your own sense of accomplishment. Fastest way to overwhelm, fastest way to feeling defeated. All right. And how's that going to add to motivation and energy? It isn't. Is whatever you think the time is, quadruple it. And then run a little experiment. Take maybe one quarter of what the goal area to remediate is and time yourself. And then understand that even if that area is four times that size, it's not going to take you four times period, the, the length of time. Because as you continue to move forward, you will probably at a certain point start moving less efficiently. All right. Sometimes when you, oh, quite often when you overestimate yourself, you end up entering into a period where decision making is sort of like moving through mud up to your hips. All right. Take a break. Preemptively before trying. All right. Ask yourself, assess what the task actually is. And how you could possibly break it down into manageable, doable steps. Figure out the tools and resources you have right now aren't working that well. What is it that's lacking? And then how to get access to the right tools and resources. Because you can, whatever you decide, you can do, you can do. You couldn't imagine it if you weren't capable of it. You just may not have the plan, the tools and the resources at this time that are appropriate to the success you're looking for. Okay, the last double standard. Many people, okay, set a double standard by not expecting the same of ourself as of others or as positively or negatively. So different rules apply for different folks. All right. We can also reverse that, which is really damaging, where we continually expect more of ourselves than we would of someone else. Now, there's a little bit of a kink in that thought because if it's our responsibility it really doesn't belong to anybody else it belongs to us and when we ask for help we need to be sure that we're asking the right parties that are part of what we need all right okay so now let's look at a really great, very doable 10 step. I broke it down into little tiny baby steps. So write it down. Okay. Write it down. Just the core elements of what we're about to say. So this is called my, my, title for this is 10 step method to stop psyching yourself out all right by distorted thinking styles problematic thinking styles and start today to catch those distortions because the distortions are actually like those funny mirrors at the circus they are warps in our thinking and when we can start by identifying them we can get ourselves back on track. Each and every one of us has to realize we can't change something that we don't know about. All right. We can't change something we don't know about. And we don't admit. If you have it packed up in some other gift wrap, all right, then 
you're not looking at it for what it is. You're not accepting. And that doesn't mean blame. Acceptance is not blame. So the first thing to do is to commit to identifying what the warp is. How do we do that? Number one, everybody all together, notice our thoughts. When we're in a bit of a soup and we don't like the temperature, all right, notice your thoughts. Notice your thoughts. And also, in noticing it, give yourself the benefit of a little bit of time. A little bit of time to do what? Please, everybody say, go on pause. That does not mean a dead stop. That means a little, like backing up from the fire. All right. A little time to dedicate to tracking. Where did that thought come from? Is that a positive, a negative? Hmm. Track your thoughts as they happen, particularly the ones that are getting you in trouble or are defeating you, undermining you. Okay. Especially about the issues that are really important to you. And part of that might be, I'm on a time crunch to get this cleaned up because there are outside forces that are requiring it of me or I have company coming. I have, I have a need. I, somebody's being released from the hospital and they need to be able um, to maneuver through here on a walker or on a whatever. Or I'm so fed up with this clutter. I need, I need to have calm and peace in my life. Whatever issues are especially important to you, dedicate so not every thought that goes through your mind all right but the ones that are are connected to especially important issues for you start there you can branch out from there and write down the thoughts keep a little pad and paper with you this doesn't go on forever all right this is not going to be the bible this is not going to be war and peace this is just going to be giving yourself an external cue so that you can use more of your senses to assess what the problem is here that's getting in my way, that's making me go off track. And as you write it down and you're on pause for that little brief period of time, identify what the distortion is among those 12 Identify the distortion and ask, what do I know? Here's a key one. As I look at that distortion, this thought, and I identify the distortion that's contained in it. So I'll just give you off the top of my head, um, all or nothing thinking, labeling, um, having a brain drain, uh, magnification, you, you you're exaggerating it, you're catastrophizing it, you're minimizing it, you're labeling yourself, you're labeling somebody else, you've got double standards, different rules apply for me as the other guy, that can work both ways. All right, that's a few. If this isn't working, there's something wrong with the way you're putting two and two together here with the thought. Identify the distortion as best you can. And ask, ask yourself, because you're the only one with the answer. What do I know in my heart of hearts if I tell myself the truth and I never have to admit it to anybody else? All right. What do I know isn't true about this thought? What do I know isn't true about this thought? Oh. And then acknowledge that our brain, your brain, my brain, we all do this, all right? It's playing tricks on us. Yeah, no. I call this distortions convenient truths, convenient thoughts. 
they're working for me right now because they either protect me in some way from a truth that I really would rather not admit, or they are not, they're allowing me not to engage in the solution. They're giving me an excuse not to engage. I will, but just not now. I'm not feeling well. I'm tired. I'm overwhelmed. I'm, you're not going to get less overwhelmed by backing away from it. Taking a tiny break is not the same thing as backing away. Okay. Our brain is playing tricks on us. It's taking shortcuts. So the next thing I want you to do is think about as you look at this, the whole, that whole thought as you wrote it out, that whole thought may not be a problem, may not be distorted, but if it's not working or you're getting a little bit of a heebie-jeebie to it, all right, you know something about that thought that only you know, you know the truth, all right, time to face it. Think about the distorted part of the thought. Just that little chunk that kind of took a perfectly good thought and plan that was going to be a foundation piece for a plan and kind of put it off. Put it off out of the way. Okay. It's, it's misguided. Think about the distorted part of the thought. And that will be the part that isn't as true as we want to believe it is. Okay. Now, possibly we are misrepresenting the truth to ourselves, or maybe we're just out and out closing our eyes to it because we just can't see what's wrong with it. If it's not working, there's something wrong with it. Or maybe it's protecting us from failing to look at something we know in our heart of hearts is just in some way, a little off the mark. There is never going to be a better time than now as you're looking at that thought that is troubling you. There is never going to be a better time to be brave. At that moment, you have a choice. Back away from the truth or at least acknowledge the truth. What you do about the truth, that's a story for another day maybe, but start to acknowledge the truth when you're engaging in distorted thinking. All right, be your own best friend, be your own ally, because when you are your own ally, that gives you the strength and the courage to fight back. What do you fight back with? Okay, not more distorted thinking. All right, with observable, verifiable truths, facts. Never go to fear, always go to fact. When you feel fear, I want you to, you are worth putting yourself on pause temporarily and dealing with the facts, finding out, researching and assessing the, the facts, the better information that will be the basis of the plan that you're going to invest in. And when you fight back, that will allow you to fight back with the truth, just the facts. Setting aside the part that we added, remember the bubbles, all right? I did those bubbles for a reason, people. Setting aside the part that we add with our overload of emotional content. Remember, feelings aren't facts, okay? It's important that we respect our feelings. We are aware of them. We observe them. Observe does not mean we jump in the deep end of the pool with them. All right. We observe them. We acknowledge them. 
They come from a place of fear or injury, vulnerability, all right? But they aren't facts. They may be part of the context of what you bring with you on that particular day. You're fighting this fight to face the truth. They may be part of the context of the day. Maybe it means you're going to be able to go a little faster if they're positive thoughts. Or maybe it means you're going to have to change the tempo, change the pace a bit, because you're not feeling that great today. Now, a second way to test, right? What are we testing? We're, we're actually testing the soundness of our thought, that particular thought. How sound is it? Is to ask ourselves, if someone we cared about said this particular thought to you, what would you say? Sometimes stepping outside of our own ownership of these feelings these, these experiences, these thoughts, take a step outside, put yourself on pause. Pause is a great place to go to for some short intervals while you catch your breath and regroup, reorient yourself. Step outside of your ownership of this situation and ask yourself, what would you say to somebody you really cared about if they said this thought to you? Now, catch your breath, be brave, go back and rewrite your thought with the distortion embedded in it. That thought, rewrite that one. Okay. Okay, rewrite it. Now, take a deep breath and cross out the lie. Cross out the warp because all you've got left then is the truth. Write down now, write down the truth. It doesn't mean you have to act on it right away, but it means you are facing it. Now you can gather the facts that will support success, the right tools and resources, to make it possible to act on the truth and be guided by it. And the more you do this, when you have challenging thoughts, problematic, you find yourself kind of spinning a little bit, the more you invest in this exercise, the faster it's going to happen automatically. You can actually all together now, what's the H word? Habituate this. And that is a good thing. Our feelings load. They're loaded with hormones. They're loaded with hormones in our system. And those hormones, depending on whether it's a happy, unhappy, positive, negative, decide what hormones to send to your brain. That is not the fuel you want to be making important decisions with. Your best friend is pause. Your best friend is this process and be guided by it. Because remember, it is almost never the event or the thought itself that hurts us. It is the meaning that we apply to it almost always. Let's get let somebody in here. Okay. So we have 10 minutes. I'm going to go around. Do not unmute yourself. I'm going to go around uh, for the next 10 minutes and I'm going, so don't move around on my screen here. Um, and I'm going to ask people to unmute one at a time and just to offer a thought. Uh, not one of your thoughts that you need to rethink. Just what are your thoughts about this process? What are your thoughts about accepting that it is not almost never like it's not even worth thinking about almost never the event itself that 
harms you. It is the meaning we apply to it. You can send, yeah, you can send me an email because I'll tell you that would be great. <laughs> Take right. care. Okay. Bye. Okay. Can you do it? Yes, you can.